Even after vital signs appear to return to normal, babies who require resuscitation may have problems associated with abnormal transition. After resuscitation, appropriate monitoring and interventions will help to anticipate and address many complications. A baby who responds well to the initial steps of newborn care may only need close observation and does not need to be separated from the mother. Ongoing observation of breathing, thermoregulation, feeding, and activity are important to determine if additional interventions are required. Babies with a risk of abnormal transition will need additional respiratory support and closer assessment. Many will require intra-hospital transport. If a newborn requires post-resuscitation care in a location outside of the mother's room, the parents should be encouraged to see and touch their baby as soon as possible. Regarding the case in which supplemental oxygen is needed after resuscitation, connect all the breathing circuits and open the oxygen therapy before removing the PPV interface. Adjust the flow rate and concentration rate accordingly, then switch the PPV mask to nasal cannula. Besides pulse oximeter and ECG used during resuscitation, additional blood pressure wrap is needed to anticipate hypotension. Set interval NIBP on the screen to have a sequential auto test. An apnea wake-up vibrator is recommended attached to the foot. To attain temperature stability, place a hat on the baby's head. To avoid overheating after resuscitation, change the manual mode to the skin mode of the radiant warmer for servo control heating. Put on a blanket if needed. Before leaving the baby or intra-hospital transport, put up the damper doors for protection. Worth mentioning that if indicated, cooling must be initiated promptly. Studies have demonstrated that therapeutic hypothermia, cooling after resuscitation, reduces the risk of death and improves neurologic outcomes in babies with moderate to severe HIE, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. If possible, users can unplug the monitor module and insert it into the cooling system to monitor physiological parameters and temperature trends during treatment. This eliminates the need to remove and reattach accessories on the baby's skin, reducing pain and stress, which could otherwise lead to brain bleeding or other complications. After the birth and resuscitation in the delivery room, some babies are required to be transferred to a nursery or NICU based on their health condition. In this chapter, we will continue the previous case for details of intra-hospital transport. The infant is getting stable and let's go ahead and get this baby ready to transfer to the NICU. I will go update mom and we can also debrief once we get the baby ready. Now, NICU team professor came to see the baby and was ready to have a handover of the baby's health condition with the resuscitation team member. Before transferring the baby to the NICU, turn off the central power supply and use residual heat for warming. Or, connecting the power cord to a UPS, a battery backup system, for continuous heating. Turn on the gas cylinder to support oxygen therapy during transfer to the NICU. After turning on the cylinders, disconnect the central gas system. Release the foot brake, use the handle on the back of the warmer for pushing, and others can lead the way on the side or in the front. We wish all the newborns to grow strong and healthy. Thank you for watching.